Hey, I'm Ben, and today I'm going to be showing you how I make gloves in Marvelous Designer and Clo 3D using my free hand avatar. Let's get into it. So with this tutorial, we added a free Clo hand avatar to our website. So head on over to retopodev.com. Check out the free downloads where you can get this avatar and our measurement specs that we'll be using for this tutorial for free. All right, so let's jump right into Clo. We're gonna go to File, Add, Avatar, and download that AVT file right into Clo. As it loads up, you're gonna see right away that it has skin texture files included. And we've also included all of our measurement uh, circumference specs that we'll be using, which is also included in the spreadsheet here. So you don't actually have to pull those, but they're there as reference lines if you need them. All right, so whenever I start a new project, I always create some specs so that way I have some basis to start from. So that's what that entire spreadsheet is that you can download um, or take a screenshot of. And what that's gonna do is give us some rough specs to go off of. So those are finger circumferences, palm circumferences, lengths, and all of those things are gonna make it so much easier if we start right off the bat with them. So you can use those and then we can get right into actually making this glove. All right, so we're gonna select a rectangle tool. Just click on the empty canvas. That's gonna bring up this dialog box and we're gonna enter the width and height of our palm. So the width is gonna be half the palm width and then the length is gonna be your palm length plus your index finger. So that's gonna give us our maximum length of this main pattern piece. With the internal line tool, we're gonna to click on that outer edge, right click in the middle and we'll enter our index finger length into this dialog box. Then from edge to edge, we're gonna add a palm line circumference, and we're gonna adjust this slightly just to have an angle that roughly matches what the avatar looks like, and readjust that line to match the bottom of that reference line for the index finger. Now using the add point tool, we're gonna add finger circumferences across that palm width that we just drew. So go ahead and pull those specs off of that chart, and we're just gonna split this line up for all four fingers. Now using the offset line tool, we're gonna to select the bottom line where the cuff is, offset that based on the cuff width, which we have identified as 20 millimeters in our chart. Now with some rough math, we've figured out that each side of the cuff needs to be seven millimeters smaller than your palm width. So we're just gonna offset each of those out seams by seven millimeters. That way we have a tapering glove from the palm down to the cuff opening. And we're gonna pull those reference lines down delete that bottom cuff line. Then we're gonna select those two lines, right click and hit cut and delete those. Now back up on the fingers, we're gonna delete the original reference line and we're gonna draw new fingers off of those points that we cut up that palm circumference width with. And we're gonna delete that palm reference line, select all of those finger lines that we just drew, right click and hit cut. And that's gonna give us our fingers. Now adding a new reference line, we're gonna draw our finger lengths from that line. And we're just gonna again, click, right click, and then add those lengths across every single finger. And that'll give us our finger lengths and we're gonna adjust from the top, pulling each of those lines down to match that new line. Now again, with the add point tool, I'm just gonna split each of these finger ends in half. So that way we can go ahead and use the smooth curve tool to smooth each of those fingertips. I'm also gonna go ahead and smooth the side seams. Now, since fingers taper at the end, I'm gonna use the edit pattern tool and move each of these points in about four millimeters just to give a nice taper to the fingertip. Now this is where our avatar really comes in handy. I'm gonna be using gravity to help make this a lot easier on us. Now with the pattern piece right in front of the hand, I'm gonna use the tack avatar pins and pin each fingertip to the palm. Now I'm just copying and pasting that palm pattern, flipping it and throwing it on the back of the hand. And I'm gonna repeat the same process by tacking each of the fingertips to the back of hand and hitting spacebar to simulate. Now to keep things organized, I'm just gonna add another fabric here, throw a quick color on it to represent the palm material like it's a leather. Now I'm gonna rename them and assign them to each of the pattern pieces. Okay, so we're making a full fourchette glove. And what that means is the inner part of the fingers connecting the back of hand and palm of hand is gonna be a thin strip of fabric, which I've kind of set up as six millimeters, which fits a lot of gloves, fits a lot of hands. 
Now I'm gonna add a couple points just above the thumb knuckle and below the pinky knuckle, just kind of eyeballing it where I think I want these four shets to end. And you'll kind of see as we get through this what exactly that looks like. So we're just gonna align all of those points so that way they hit in the same spot. Now we're gonna select all of that upper hand pattern piece lines and we can see the 2D line length there which is gonna be our fourchette length. And we've already specified that we want a six millimeter fourchette width which is about what I find in a lot of gloves and uh, looks really nice and, and fits around the avatar hand nicely. So just like we did at the beginning, I used the rectangle tool to draw that fourchette which is the line length of the upper fingers and then that six millimeters wide. And now I'm adding a few points that are 40 millimeters in from the outside edge, just so that way I have a nice rounded corner. So we're gonna add a middle point here, delete these two outside points, and then use that curve tool to make a nice smooth curve at the end of our forchette. Now the forchette sews to the outside fingertips of each side. And we're gonna use the free sewing tool to sew from one side to the other. And then I'm gonna use the superimpose to the side so that way I make sure it looks like it aligns. And then I'm gonna repeat the same thing for the palm side as well. And we'll use that same superimpose side and you'll see everything aligns nicely at this point. Now, as you see, if we go ahead and simulate here, we have a few problems. This whole mesh and everything is so small, so we need to start with the skin offset of the avatar. So by selecting the avatar, I can set that down to one millimeter, which will help. And then we're gonna bring our particle distance down to 10 and see with the simulation if that fixes anything. As you can see, it's quite a bit better. I'm gonna go through and just delete all these pins now because we don't need them now that the glove is sewn together over those fingers. Now I definitely feel like I can bring my particle distance down even further, so I'm gonna set that to five and add some thickness to the fabric just to give a little bit better look. And I'm just gonna kinda of pull on here during simulation mode to get those fingers nice and set. And you can switch over to opacity transparent mode for your fabric, and then you can re really see what's happening underneath the glove. Now I'm gonna add a point at the cuff which dictates that cuff width which I have outlined as 20 on my glove specs. This can be whatever you want depending on what you initially added as your length of your overall glove. Now I wanna sew a little bit further down from where the fourchette ends above the thumb. So I'm just adding a new point there. Again, kind of eyeballing it and sewing those pieces together and we can kind of adjust that as we go. Now setting the fabric to transparent, I can see where that initial thumb crease was gonna be, where that seam is. So using the edit curvature, I'm just gonna pull in that side seam, which is gonna give me my thumb seam. So that thumb panel is gonna sew into that side. And then we're gonna repeat the same thing on the back of hand, but it's gonna be a little less severe. Now really quick, I wanna talk about seam line length. When you're sewing two pieces together, it's best to keep those seam line lengths the same or as close to zero as possible. Let's say you sew a 40 millimeter seam to an 80 millimeter seam, you're gonna start to get ruching on the one pattern piece. And that might be something that you want on like a gathered skirt or a hem elastic or something like that. But for this glove, we wanna keep all of those seam lines as close to zero as possible so that way all the seams are nice and smooth. Now selecting that line, I can see what that 2D line length is, which will be the end of the thumb panel. And then using my spec sheet, I'm gonna use the thumb length to indicate exactly what that pattern piece needs to look like. So I'm gonna kind of roughly etch out this rectangular pattern sort of trapezoid. Now that'll be a rough shape that we can adjust as we go, but this will get us started. So I'm gonna add a little curvature here. The back of hand sort of matches the back of thumb seam, and then we're gonna split that thumb panel in half again, use the curve tool, really smooth that out, and I'm gonna sew that onto the back of hand. Now, again, using the pin tack avatar, I'm gonna pin that onto the back of the thumb. And just like we did with the palm earlier, I'm gonna copy this thumb piece, paste it over, flip it, and then I'm going to adjust these seam lines so that way they roughly match. And then I'm gonna sew these two thumb pieces together and get everything aligned on the avatar and hit simulate. Now that we have the patterns in place, we can go ahead and just shape this a little bit by shrinking some of the outer thumb pieces. It was a little wide. And then the inner thumb piece, you can see how the thumb is bent. We want to pull some of that fabric out. So I'm just gonna scoop some of that out by curving that pattern piece. Again, making sure that those seam lines still match up. Now, as we simulate, you can see it pulled a lot of that fabric out. 
Now that we have the basics done, I'm gonna throw some fabrics in here. For the back of hand, I'm gonna use a knit pique jersey just to give some stretch and a nice kind of easy movement. And then on the front palm of the hand, I'm gonna use the leather lambskin because I like those heavier wrinkles that you get out of it and kind of like a work glove type look. The last few steps here are just kind of cleaning the pattern up. I want the cuff to be a little bit longer and get a little further down the wrist. So I'm just gonna pull both of those down at the same time and bring in the sides just a, a few millimeters to tighten up the whole glove. I'm gonna do that on both sides and simulate and you'll see it kind of tightens that bottom opening. Now looking at this, it still looks a little fat and chunky to me. And I think we can reduce that skin offset down to 0.1 and that's gonna help a ton. And then we're just gonna go down and uh, select all these pattern pieces and reduce the additional collision. Uh, down to 1.5 and you'll see that brings everything a little closer when you're working with smaller objects like gloves you can really kind of fine tune those a lot further than you can with other things i'm also going to bring that thumb crotch seam down a little bit and just shrink the overall thumb because it looks a little big to me still and just refining some of these pattern shapes that's what's really nice you can kind of quickly do this especially when you're just looking at 3d and you can see how it's reacting in real time and that looks a lot better to me. Finally, the fingertips are a little bulbous to me and I want them to be a little tighter. So I'm just gonna go through each of these fingertips and just pull in these anchor points so that way it's a little bit more slimmed down. And I think that looks a lot better and we can move on to the fun stuff. Okay, so once you've created your block pattern, this is one of my favorite things. I always save this file as a clean file that's just labeled as a block pattern, so that way I can go back to it and just start from there instead of starting from scratch. So I have so many different block patterns that I've created, and this saves me a ton of time, so make sure you do that, and then from here forward, make a new save file. So now we can start the design process, the fun stuff. You can create anything you want. You can get some reference photos online. You can take some of your sketches. I've got a sci-fi glove that I've been wanting to make. So um, I'm gonna do that, but you are welcome to take this anywhere you want. If you liked this tutorial, subscribe to the channel. It helps a ton. Definitely drop your comments below if you have any. Share this with anyone else that wants to learn Clo. Um, I'm always around to answer questions and thanks for tuning in. If you want to keep watching and make this sci-fi glove with me, let's get into that now. So now we're just gonna have some fun here and just start playing around with designs. So I'm gonna increase the cuff length to give a little bit more coverage on that and just kind of fix some of these shapes. So that way it looks a little bit nicer. All right, so I want the back of hand to be a little bit cleaner right now. So I'm gonna select those two lines at the thumb and just hit merge and that'll kind of smash them together. It doesn't need to be perfect. And then I'm gonna use the internal line tool to start drawing out some of these design shapes. So that way I can see how they look. And I kind of want that sci-fi look or like robotic. So I'm just putting these at sort of the flexing points of the fingers. Now for the upper knuckles, I'm just going to make one shape, copy it across the other knuckles, and then use extend and trim so that way it aligns to each of the finger seams. Now we're going to offset the bottom cuff here because I want a little cuff piece. I really like drawing with just straight harsh corners and then using that curve tool to get nice rounded edges. I think it makes a lot smoother curves and looks a lot nicer than any other method. So I'm just using that across all of these pattern pieces and looking at that 3D view so that way I can see how everything aligns. Now, once I like it, I'm gonna use the cut and sew selection there. And then I'm gonna merge these two pieces to remove at least one of these seams on the inner uh, part of the thumb. Then I'm gonna select all these other pieces. I kinda want this like thin offset, almost like inset piece. So I'm just gonna offset all of these by about two millimeters. With everything kinda set up, I'm just gonna select all the lines that I want cut and I'm just gonna use the cut and sew tool. I'm just keeping this nice and simple. Now if you look, here's kind of a quick rendered view. You can see sort of where my seams are and this is kinda that first step in the design phase for me. Now I really want materials to shine. That's where I'm gonna do most of the aesthetic for this piece. So I went on to the uh, Substance Source page for Adobe, which I have, and I'm just gonna look for some sci-fi materials and I'm just gonna download those, drop them straight into the file. Now I wanna make sure that I adjust my physical properties to match the fabric that's already been simulated. So I adjust that right away. 
I put that onto the new fabrics. And now we wanna make sure we adjust this displacement map parameters because four millimeters is gonna be way too big. So I'm gonna go down to 0.1. And then under transformation, I'm gonna bring that down to about 20%. Most of these are built for much larger scale. And then under custom properties, I'm just gonna play with the color to get exactly what you're looking for. And I'm going for a black. Now we're gonna hit render, take a look at some of these render settings. So I always like transparent backgrounds and overall I want the image size to be a little bigger. So we're gonna go 1920 by 1920. Now under the rendered view, since I have one of those fabrics placed, I wanna start playing with lighting. I don't really like the HDRIs, so I'm gonna set up my own lighting scenario here. I'm gonna set a rectangular light and shrink the overall dimensions of it and set it off to one of the sides and get some power on there and kind of adjust with a backlight as well to give some highlights to it and set up a custom view so that way I can quickly jump back and forth. I like to turn on and off different lights while I'm working on them so I can see what each light is doing specifically. And once I have those kind of set up, I turn them off and we're gonna set up the rest of our fabrics here. For these little strips, I wanted to do a glow. So there's actually a light preset. So I added a new fabric, went down to the type and I actually turned it on to light. And then you'll actually see as we go to render this that it is emitting some light off of it, which I thought was kind of cool for this sci-fi type glove. So earlier we talked about that displacement parameter that we changed. This is what it looks like if you don't adjust that. So you can see it's really popping the mesh out. So I'm just gonna go in again, change that down to 0.1 or so. Now I'm gonna fill in with other fabrics that I'm liking and play with some settings. I like to turn on and off curved side geometry to see how that plays, additional thicknesses and collisions to see how you can get some different stacks of fabric thickness. Now you can see here that the geometry is starting to look a little bit squared off. And if we go to the avatar wireframe view, you can see that it's slightly low poly. So that way it kind of works um, in a faster way. Now I'm gonna click this divide mesh button and you can see how many more polygons we get out of it. I'm gonna go up to two. Now make sure you're saving before you do this because it could crash your system. And we're going to now re-simulate this with uh, a particle distance of one. So we're getting a lot higher poly count and you can see how much denser the mesh is. And I caught a little thing here where I realized my normals on my four shots were wrong. So we're just gonna click flip normals. Let's re-simulate that and you can see how much crisper the mesh is and the polygon count really helped with that. Now, after tweaking some settings, I'm just gonna set up a quick little camera view, throw in some focal distance and click render by pressing that little play button after I have my settings set. And you can see the detail that we got out of this, uh, those normal maps and those high quality substance uh, textures that we downloaded really bring this to life. And then that little bit of focus kind of plays off of some of that realism. To finish this project out, I wanted to challenge myself with a little bit of a hand animation. So I dropped it back into Blender, animated with some keyframes, brought it back into Clo, and did a final render pass for you. And I hope that you enjoyed the video and enjoy this final render. Thank you.